Hello and welcome to another Zach Carnage video and today I am thanking you guys because you have managed to get me past that 1000 subscriber milestone. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for all the support that I've had from countless YouTube channels out there and it's really exciting to be moving forward uh, with the channel. Uh, obviously the content that I've been delivering recently has been focused on that Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. It's just the most accessible thing that I have for me at university. I've been keeping up with regional play. I recently went to Basingstoke Regional and took 14th place with Eidolon Zoo. Uh, it's a really fun deck. Uh, I should definitely recommend it. And if you want to see a deck profile for that, then put a comment in the comment box down below. I cannot stress enough how thankful I am that everyone's been subscribing or scrubscribing, as I like to say. Some of the ideas that I've had for the Tactica videos, obviously we want to do more Necron stuff. I normally do comparisons of units that are similar or made from the same kit. Uh, so we did the uh, Praetorian Lich Guard sort of thing a while back, but we're kind of limited in kits that produce multiple types of unit, apart from like the Deathmark Immortal, which isn't really a fair comparison because they fit very different um, areas of your army. One thing that I'm considering doing is a, a Doomside versus Doomsday arc video. Obviously they're not made from the same kit, but they're both trying to do a similar sort of role in your army, uh, although they approach it in very different ways. So I want to do some uh, potentially maths heavy uh, in-depth analysis of what they can actually do with some interesting analysis of how they sweep out the board and uh, what areas they can actually get to in a certain number of turns. As for the Tau, obviously, again, limited because none of the kits that you can actually buy at the moment produce different types of units. So there's obviously the interesting choice of what weapons do I put on what kit. Uh, so we've got to look at the broadsides in the current form of the game and then also the weapons that you put on bigger um, artillery like on your Reptides or whether you go for a Storm Surge or something like that. In the future I'm also looking to put together some stop motion videos. I'd be interested to see if I can actually still do anything that's any good. Uh, obviously the kit that I'm working with now is upgraded significantly uh, compared to what I did in my previous videos, uh, which you can obviously check out on my channel. Just go on the channel and search stop motion and something weird will come up. Um, the plan is to do something with some of the Gundam model kits that have come out recently, or just, you know, some of my old ones if I can put them together and find the time. So later on in the video, you're going to see an unboxing, uh, if you stay tuned for that. Uh, basically, a bunch of friends of mine and myself, we all got together, we bought a load of the Raging Tempest boxes, and I'm going to be unboxing those for you on the camera. I've already actually filmed all of the unboxing uh, with a bunch of them already. So uh, that will come up later in the video, but before that we want to get through the competition section. So in order to reflect some of the amazingness that has been shared with me from the community, I want to give back to you, the people, and I want to give you prizes that you deserve. So for this competition or giveaway, uh, there are multiple ways to enter and there are a few different prizes that you could win. So one of the options that you can get is you can get up to £50 worth of GW merchandise, uh, either from their website or from any website that you can link me to that I'll be able to pay for and then I'll just get them to send it straight to you. Or I can do uh, up to £30 worth of GW merchandise which I get sent to me and then I'll put together and paint myself, although you'll have to wait a bit for that because I'm not currently somewhere where I can actually do that. Uh, but once I've done that I can then ship that to you. One of the other options that you can go for is up to £50 worth of cards, whether that's from eBay or a particular card store. Whichever you prefer, again I'll just uh, put in your address for it and have it all sent to you. In addition to either of these options, you also have an uh, extra few set of bonus prizes. So the first one is you'll get 10 mentions in specially selected videos that I'll produce throughout the year. Uh, so whether they be ones focused on your particular hobby or ones that are based around similar concepts, you'll get mentioned in many of my videos. As another bonus prize on top of that, if you are a Warhammer or Yu-Gi-Oh fan, then just tell me what sort of thing you're into and I will compile a deck list or an army list that's I think specifically made for you, and if you want I can even sign it for you and send it to you. For this I will need either a mailing address or an email address, I'll also need to know some details about you so I can get a feel of what sort of army or what sort of deck really reflects who you are. So that's all the prizes, how do you actually enter the competition? So there are five ways to enter this competition, one of them is obligatory and that is to subscribe, and all five of these options will get you points. So there'll be a point system, you'll get put into an Excel document with however many points you have, and then a randomly generated number will select one of you to win the prize. So first off, as I've already said, you need to be a subscriber to enter this competition. That gets you your first point. For your second point, you need to like and comment on this video. For your third point, head over to the Facebook page, there's a link in the description down there. Go ahead and get onto that page, give it a like, and then comment on the competition 
post that's on there with your YouTube username. For your fourth point, you can send me any deck list or army list. You can do that through the Facebook page if you want, or you can get through to my email. So for the fifth set of points, you actually get three points for this thing. All you need to do is send me a video response of what you collect and why. So currently, I'm in the process of collecting uh, various copies of the Mystical Space Typhoon card for Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, mainly because I think it's such a basic card that it'll be easy to get all of the sets, but I think it'd be really interesting to just have, well, as much of a binder as is possible to fill with potentially singles or play sets of every single edition of MST that has ever been printed. So obviously, you know, if you've got spares lying around and you want to send them over, then ping me a message and we'll see what we can do. So those are the five ways of entering this competition. If you're not clear on any of it, then go ahead, leave a comment, ask me a few questions, and I'll try and divulge any extra information that you need. Remember that this channel is very heavily reliant on your input, so I want to know everything that you want to see from the channel. You just tell me what you want to see, whether it's a meta duel, um, a highly edited duel, a deck profile, an army list. If you want to see painting tutorials again, I can start getting into those and start uploading a bunch of those for you to see. Or if you want more Tactica videos, obviously they're much more accessible for me. I can do that sort of thing from here. If you're interested in the stop motion side of things, please leave a hashtag SM in the comment section down below. Once again, a massive thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel. I can't wait to keep uploading content for you. And I really want to see what you guys want so that I can give you more and more of the same great content. Without further ado, let's get into the unboxing. Okay, so to kick off the unboxing, I've got myself on the left and Jason on the right. Remember, don't use sharp objects, kids, if you're not with an adult. You need their supervision, obviously. Uh, so I have sped up this video just because we need to get through quite a few cards in this uh, series. So you'll see a few ultras and supers being pulled out. Uh, nothing enormous so far of any serious worth. Uh, so we just, uh, we've got an Odd Eyes Rebellion there, we got some Wind Witches coming out, this is the Raging Tempest set, so it's got some pretty cool stuff, uh, and then a Zodiac Thoroughblade there is actually pretty interesting. So, uh, these boxes will turn out to be pretty interesting overall, um, let's just see what we can get. So we ended up with quite a few Natashas, there's the, uh, Dryden, the first Dryden, uh, so the two boxes that we're opening both actually belong to Jason, um, so I managed to pull his, uh, Dryden out of the first box. Uh, and then went straight up and got the Barrage as well, probably the two most expensive cards from the set, so my box is definitely looking like one of the best boxes that you can actually get out of this set. So uh, yeah, a Dryden and a Barrage from my box, he got a Dryden from his box already, uh, wow, so that's, that was pretty crazy. Uh, we ended up with some sort of weird system here where he ended up also pulling another barrage. So we got two drones and two barrages from two boxes. That is, uh, that's where the money is at, kids. If you wanna, if you wanna pull, you gotta pull like Jason ended up doing with this awesome set of sets that he got here. So we see some more win witches come out, um, and then basically assembling a massive pile of commons and rares at this point, and uh, the occasional super and ultra. Uh, I think there may be a couple of uh, ultras left, so yeah, another Wind Witch. Um, we got quite a few Wind Witches out of the set. They did get that additional hype recently because the Invoked set is absolutely awesome. I really can't recommend enough trying out Invoked, whether you decide to play a Wind Witch variant or a Zoo variant. Uh, I think they both have their different quirks. Um, Zoo has a great deal of recursion, but then Wind Witch being able to put that crystal wing on turn one that can't be destroyed by card effects, that's just, that's absolutely insane unless you face against something that's very kaiju heavy. Uh, so we need to get through the rest of Jason's pack, so I think we end up just splitting it all here because it's all going to be his anyway. Uh, so he gets the, uh, the pretty cool new Crystron Synchron, uh, Synchro Monster and a whip tail out there. So that's it for the first pair of boxes. Uh, now we're going to move through to, I think, just a few packs out of the next box. Uh, so we see some Wind Witches, that Tierra. Is it Tierra? It might be Sephira. Uh, I'm not sure what they ended up calling it, but you know the card that's basically like the Sephira of old, so stupidly hard to summon, but then if you can summon it, it's got a pretty nice effect for it. Uh, so the question is, really, uh, will Link Summoning affect that in any huge deal? Do you think it'll be harder to make these big boss monsters in a Link Summoning format where you have to, um, 
You have to rely heavily on uh, the position of your monsters, and you know if you can't set up your link monsters properly, you might not be able to get into the extra deck monsters that you need to make that big summon uh, for a uh, Sephir or Tierra or whatever big creature you end up going for. So I think at this stage we're just showing off some of the cards that we actually got from the set, and then we can move on to the rest of the packs. But yeah, you just clear up a little bit, so there's not too much mess for you. But obviously, we're going to be pulling a lot more cards. There's going to be a lot more mess coming out. Got that nice new Subterra monster as well, which is pretty interesting. Uh, Worm Witch Fusion is kind of cool. And a Full Force Virus out of this box, as well as Secrets, which is uh, an interesting card. You know, it's not uh, heavy on the price, but it's definitely going to be better in the future as we see more and more dark decks creep into the meta. It's, like, it's definitely a great card for um, a dark, heavy meta format. So we're just seeing who ended up getting the secret out of this box. I think it's in one of Jason's packs, because uh, we still got an additional secret, and it is, in fact, the Foolish Burial Goods. So again, you know, not the uh, priciest of um, secrets. It's not quite like the uh, the Dryden Barrage set, but it's definitely an interesting tech and can be tried out in a variety of interesting decks, such as, like, uh, Monarchs, even. Uh, so we move into the third... Uh, set of box openings, so on the left we currently have a Terry, and on the right we have Sam, I believe, and uh, let's see what they do. So you can see Terry is actually going to be sorting his cards throughout. Um, at the uh, stage when we were opening these, uh, I managed to hype up the imaginary Yu-Gi-Oh format quite a lot, so we're uh, currently establishing what rule set we want to run with it, and if you haven't tried imaginary Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, I definitely recommend going online, uh, looking up the rules for it. I think it only uh, really came into fruition a couple of years ago. I think in Shadol format was when it uh, received its um, its first true audience, and uh, you know people started catching on to what it is. And it's a really fun format to play. So I think I might actually start uploading some, maybe a couple of jewels of um, imaginary format, just so we can show off some of the cool combos. Uh, John's managed to come with a lot of interesting options, as well as Chris. They've uh, basically been assessing the entire card pool to find some pretty cool stuff for us. Uh, so from this, uh, these pairs of boxes, we can see a Spigel Misty, some Zodiac Rapiers, uh, got that Spiral Trap, Natasha's, Sephiras, or Tierra's, whatever. They uh, ended up being called. I think there's an Odd Eyes Rebellion in there as well, uh, although I don't know if we've come to any secret rares yet. Uh, they may be waiting in the wings at this point. Uh, there is that uh, grass looks greener, which uh, Terry managed to grab, and a Forge Barrow Secrets there as well. So some pretty interesting cards. Uh, that grass looks greener, and also a Zodiac Broadball, which is actually really key for some of the cool... Um, invoked zoo combos that you can do. You manage to summon it twice during the main combo, and uh, it sets you up with a pretty amazing board, so definitely a, a really useful card. And the fact that it's so generic, just two level fours to search any Beast Warrior, uh, definitely makes it worth a purchase, even if you're not playing the zoo deck, if you want to play any Beast Warrior-based deck. Uh, whereas uh, that Grassland Screener just makes milling decks so, so ridiculously powerful. Um, honestly, the, the things that Infernoids have done since its release is absolutely amazing because obviously they were so reliant on managing to pull out that reasoning before and then when reasoning got hit man like they threw in monster gate and they had to rely a lot on light swans then on to get things going but just running a 60 card deck with uh, like triple slow and uh, that grass just really amps up their powers and uh definitely definitely a uh, uh fantastic card for the set and searchable by left arm offering so you know you can always uh get 20 cards out of five cards in your hand that's always worth it there are some interesting techs being uh, just bounced around and shown out at the moment. So we've got the Lost Winds as well, which uh, could see uh, some significant play in, like a Paleozoic sort of deck, or just some sort of trap-heavy deck uh, for triggering your cards. And we see the last secret there, I believe, is a Full Force Forest. So, again, same comments as before, stand. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave those in the comment section down below. Thank you for 1,000 subscribers. And... As always, you guys are absolutely awesome, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Wow! No one has ever done that! No one has ever done that in the history of Dota!